When you're going through hell and everything is going against you, the easiest thing in the world to do is to start thinking negative. It's easy to go through life holding on to things that are weighing us down. Guilt, resentment, doubt, worry. The problem is when we allow these things in, they're taking up space for the good things that should be there. Imagine your life is like a container. You were created to be filled with joy, peace, confidence, creativity. But if you allow worry in, it pushes out the peace. There's not space for both. You can't go above 100%. You have a limited amount of room. If you allow guilt to take up space, that's space that you don't have for the confidence you need. Most people will let their present physical results control their way of thinking. They're emotionally involved in it. They think it's an accident that the same results keep reoccurring. That's no accident. If you've got a financial problem, if you've got a cash flow problem, if you've got a marital problem, that's what most people concentrate on. If a doctor takes a photograph of your body and then tells you you're sick and shows you you're sick, what's the person concentrate on? Sickness. What's the photograph prove? The photograph proves that the person has been concentrating on something wrong to move their body into that vibration. What should they do? They should ask for help. Where does it come from? There's only one source and they see perfect health or they see prosperity. But the cynics don't believe this. It's a strange thing, the cynics don't get results either. Quit letting your present results control your thinking. Don't let life change your name. Don't let it change your name. Don't you be nasty just because they're nasty. Don't you be hateful just because they're hateful. Don't you be vengeful just because they're vengeful. Don't lose yourself in your situation. Don't let your situation eat up yourself. You got to get grounded. You got to train your mind to serve you. Meditation is one of the ways in which you can do that. Reading is one of the ways that you can do that. Listening to music is one of the ways that you can do that. Exercise is one of the ways in which you can do that. Things that you can do to still your mind, to clear your thoughts so you can think. Change the way you see yourself and begin to attend to the personal details if you trust yourself. If you believe and don't doubt in everything in you, you can do it, you can do it. When you say a situation, a person is hopeless, you're slamming the door in the face of God. There's no guarantee that because somebody is now down on their luck, they can never come back. Who can guarantee that you can't make, that you can't have your dream? All we need to do is we look at our dreams. As we get ready to hit the floor, I'm blessed and highly favored. Don't let circumstances turn you around. Don't let hard times turn you around. Whatever you're experiencing, you know that this too shall pass. That you have the ability to make it happen. Why? You got a sense of entitlement. I deserve this and whatever I have to do, I'm willing to step up into face life and grab it in a collar and say, give it up because it's mine. People think there is something called as negative thought and positive thought. They want to remove the negative thoughts and have only positive thoughts. For such people, I would ask them to just experiment for 10, 15 seconds. Let them forcefully remove one thought from their mind. For example, next 10 seconds, just don't think of a monkey. Try not to think of a monkey. For next 10 seconds, you will see, you will be full of monkeys. So what I am saying is, this is the nature of your mind, because in this mind, all the three pedals are throttled. There is no break, there is no clutch. Whatever you touch, it will only go faster. In this kind of mind, people have been taught from moral teachers and religious teachers. Do not think about bad things. Well, since then, it's been a full-time job. So. There is no way you can handle the mind like this. This doesn't need any great enlightenment. If you spend two minutes with your eyes closed, you will realize you cannot do anything forcefully with this mind. So, I want to remove negative thoughts. Do not ever go in this direction, because what you want to remove will become your quality. Always you will be on it. So, what should I do? The thing is, this without understanding the fundamental mechanism of this mind because our mind 
Human mind is the most sophisticated computer on the planet. Even all the supercomputers have come out of this. When this is the case, is it not important that we understand the mechanics of how it functions? One simplistic aspect of how it functions is there are no subtractions and divisions and divisions in our mind. There is only addition and multiplication. If you try to do something with it, it will say one more. If you try hard, it will multiply into many more. In this mind, you don't try to identify what is positive, what is negative, and try to remove it. First of all, one needs to understand this mind of yours. This body of yours is supposed to serve you. The life that you are is important. Body and mind are vehicles that must serve us. If you sit in a vehicle, it must go where you want to go. If it goes to its own destination, what is the point of such a vehicle? It's just a nuisance. Right now, most human beings are unfortunately experiencing this fantastic possibility of human mind as a nuisance, as a troublesome thing. Well, this is the most beautiful thing you have. There is something called as you which exists. This is not a composite of all your thoughts and emotions and physiological processes. Beyond that, there is you. If you close your eyes, even if you cannot see anything, you're still there. It is through the window of your eyes that you are looking out. But if you close your eyes, it doesn't mean that you don't exist. You still exist. So beyond your thought, you still exist. Beyond your emotion, you still exist, so that you, the life that you are, this has to come into your experience. Why is it that you're not allowing that to come into your experience, which is the most significant aspect of who you are? Who you are right now, the most significant aspect is you and me are alive right now. This is it. What I'm thinking, what you're thinking is not the important thing. We are alive right now, that is the important thing. So it is important that you focus on this fundamental sense of aliveness within you. And then you will see there is a natural distance between you and your thought process. Once there is a distance between your psychological process and your physiological process, this is the end of suffering. Because there are only two kinds of suffering that human beings go through, physical suffering and mental suffering. Once you create a little space between you and your mind, between you and your body, this is the end of suffering. This is something every human being has to experience and know, otherwise thinking, I will just remove negative thoughts and I will have positive thoughts. All the best, it's not going to work. 100% it's not going to work because nobody can remove it. They can avoid it for some time. So when negative thoughts come, you say whatever you want, but this is just avoiding, it's not gone. The moment you stop that, it will pop back with great force. Otherwise, it will come back in your dreams. So it's very important. First of all, you need to understand your anger, your resentment, your fear, your anxieties, the negativity that you generate. Generally, resentment, anger, it is always directed towards somebody. But we need to understand this is poisons that we are drinking and expecting somebody else to die. Fortunately, life doesn't work like that. If I drink poison, I die. If I drink poison, you don't die. So we need to understand this. When I say poison, today you can have yourself chemically analyzed right now. What is your blood work? What it says, five minutes of intense anger. Check your blood work and see. There will be lots of negative elements in it. Literally, you're poisoning yourself. So do you want to poison yourself? Definitely not. Now the very question is coming from certain helplessness. What shall I do? Don't do anything. Just sit back and just concern yourself with something which is the life process. Maybe your heartbeat, maybe your breath, maybe just the sensation of being alive. Depending upon how sensitive or how perceptive you are accordingly, find something. It could be a, a sensation in the body, it could be breath, it could be heartbeat, it could be anything, something which indicates life to you, just pay attention to that for some time. Slowly, 
you will see there is a distinction between what is you and what you have gathered, which includes both your physiological and psychological possibility or mess, whatever you've made out of it. You're not bright enough. You waited too late, you should have started younger. Those are the kind of voices that we all live with. For me, our ministry was growing. We lived in a nice house, nice house we'd ever had. Driving a nice car, living from paycheck to paycheck, but making it. Every night, I lay down at night, I hear the voices. Those voices are the kind of voices that stop you from buying into your own life. Stop you from enjoying the good times and believing that they will last. The anxiety and the pressure and the strength that it took to get from where you were to where you are doesn't go away so, so you don't really believe it's yours. You're driving it, but you don't really believe it's yours. And you're scared to relax and really rest in whatever it is or whoever it is. And the enemy always has some sort of tool or memory or situation that he uses to terrify you, even though the, the good times are here and, and, and the dream is there and the blessing is there and the goodness is there. But there's always this haunting, nagging, defiance that says, don't you relax. You're not worth it. You don't deserve it. And it's not going to last. Resting in what God has done is often more difficult than receiving what God has done. To rest in it, to believe that it will last, to believe that you will last, that love will last, that, that, that life will last, that, that good times will come, that things will be better, is difficult because of the voices. And you are what you eat, and the voices are the food that feeds your faith or fear. You see those voices that say what you can't do, what you can't have, what you can't be, what's not gonna last, what's not gonna work, is how the enemy pulverizes the promises of God in your life. And it takes word to combat word. That's why when Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan was throwing word at him, he was throwing word back. And what we have to do is put word on word. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed in my uprising, I'm blessed in my down setting. I'll be blessed into my old age. I'll be blessed when I'm an old man. My grandchildren will be blessed. My body is blessed. My body is, my mind is blessed. My head is blessed. I got this, I can handle it, I can do it, bring it on. Here it is. That kind of talk, saying that to yourself, drives back the other voices of negativity that we all have creep up behind us and tell us that we're not capable and we're not competent and we're not gifted enough and we're not good enough or we waited too late or God is punishing us.